It's one of the things that the guides really want us to register is these different ways of operating from the heart. Because these three different aspects of heart chakra are very much designed to do something completely different. What is Anahata, our personal heart chakra, the center of our seven internal chakras? What is that designed to do? It is designed to relate one to one. So relating to our friends, to our family, to our lovers, to our children, to our parents, to the people that we're close to. And that relating one to one between human beings is one of the things where we most come unstuck. It's one of the dynamics that really needs working on to be fully functional. And the thing that we suffer most from in terms of samskaras in the heart chakra, samskaras being those thoughts and beliefs and ways of being that have become patterns in you. And those are ones that come from the defenses at the back of the heart chakra, at the shoulder blades, where your angelic is. And so what is the way to dissolve the hurts, the pains, the things that we are holding on to, the defenses that stop us, block us from receiving love? It is the visualization of the angelic wings. And the angelic wings start from that point over here, in that place from which the angelic wings unfurl. And that point is a point, it's an actual two or three vertebras that very, very often play up in human beings. There's often a pain. You'll see people like, oh, doing this, and they get a pain in that area where it gets stuck. And when you visualize those angelic wings opening, it is that above all other things that I've discovered, discovered that helps to melt the defenses and dissolve those plates of armor that metaphorically get kind of um, imprinted into our shoulder blades. So that is the first aspect of heart, Anahata, the emerald green personal heart chakra. And then the higher heart chakra that we worked with next last night is pink. And as the guides were describing, it's a more subtle vibration because it isn't third dimensional, it's fifth dimensional. And it is an aspect that arose within us when human beings reached that stage of awakening where they were able to love all others unconditionally. You don't need to be in that state of unconditional for all love for all other beings all of the time for your higher heart to be activated. You just need to be able to feel it when you feel it. So the ability for any amount of seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, or years to be in an open-hearted state of being able to love others unconditionally, which is the level of Christ consciousness that we're moving towards, that comes from the higher heart chakra. So there was a time not so many years ago when that higher heart chakra wasn't there. It simply wasn't available to us. And then superseding both of those layers of the heart, not better than, but simply different. So Catherine, you're asking what is the Sanskrit word for the higher heart? It isn't Sanskrit, 
but it's a word that my guides gave the higher heart, which is A-M-U-N. A -M -U -N. So I've never heard this anywhere else other than my guides. They said that the higher heart is like the hidden one. And I subsequently discovered that Amun, because I became interested in the god Amun Ra when we were on our first group trip to Egypt. And I looked it up and the meaning of it in ancient Egypt is the hidden one. So I thought it was amazing that my guides told me that it was a name that they were giving to the higher heart chakra. And then I discovered that in um, my research for the Egyptian root for Amun-Ra, the god. So it's more commonly called the higher heart. This is what healers will call it. They'll call it the heart, which we call the personal heart chakra, Anahata. And then they'll say the higher heart. And you can also call it the sacred heart. And just to be even more interesting, you could also call it Amun, bearing in mind, I've only ever heard my guides calling it that. And then you have the one heart aspect, which supersedes both of those. But as I started saying, it is an ascended heart chakra it is the heart chakra of our future selves, really, when we are already in fifth dimensional consciousness. So this one heart, which is crystalline and which is turquoise, is even more subtle to tune into. It is crystalline, literally, the difference between a normal glass and a crystal glass is that the crystal glass is made of a material which is much, much finer and more delicate and also sounds the more beautiful sound. So in every aspect, it is on a higher frequency level. And in order to tune into Anahata and then to tune into the higher heart and then to tune into the one heart, which moves from emerald green to rose pink to diamond, silvery, turquoise, light, much more of a light than a color really. It requires this shift in our consciousness to jump into a higher frequency. And I was enthralled last night when we were going through this with a couple of hundred people, nearly 300 people at some point that were joining in live. And I could actually feel them shifting their consciousness into these different levels of perception. And this was a really, really wonderful thing to experience. A group of people collectively assisting each other in accessing a higher frequency version. Now, why do the guides want us to understand these three different levels of the heart? Is it just about theory? Is this just about spiritual knowledge? Or is it in some way useful? Because everything about the energy ABCs is supposed to be useful. We need to know when we are working on a personal heart level and when that is malfunctioning, when there is an adjustment needed. And there is always an adjustment needed when we feel wounded, when we feel rejected, when we feel defensive within our way of relating to other beings. And how often does this happen? All the time, sometimes on an everyday level, especially with the people that are closest to you. So I had a situation with 
my beloved Gino today where it was our four year anniversary of the day we met. And really in couples, it would be more sensible just to warn them the day before rather than testing them to see if they're going to remember. And Gino, I don't know whether he had remembered or not when I said to him, do you know what day it is today? He, he said, it's the anniversary of the day we met, but he didn't have flowers or a present or anything prepared for me. And when I was out in town today and choosing something to give him, my guide said to me, choose something from your heart for yourself that is a representation from how you truly know and feel Gino loves me. So they more or less told me to buy myself a present from Gino. And I did. I bought this um, beautiful purpley pink orchid that you see in the background that's next to my bed. And it seemed like a very weird thing to do, but it did actually take me out of wanting to have a personality reaction because he hadn't bought me flowers or done what I wanted him to do. Because when I really tuned in from my heart of hearts, I could feel how much Gino loved me and I could buy that present for myself. And it completely helped me to let go of a personality self-reaction that I might have had. And he is at this moment baking me a cake, <laughs> which is his way of showing love as well. So we recognize when our personality self, heart chakra, the Anahata, the emerald green is playing up. And generally what heals it is this understanding that we are loved, that helps us. Some of you, when you were practicing the version with, of the essential daily practices, which I believe is the one called new Pleiadian essential daily practices, that involves the step of calling love to yourself or feeling yourself loved. You said that you liked that version because of that step. And this is the step when you call love to yourself and you feel yourself as beloved. It is this opening in your consciousness that allows you to receive love and that stops you from being defensive and that assists you in dissolving those past hurts those things that were said to you that damaged your heart chakra. When are we working on a higher heart level? When are we working with that delicious rose pink, like a beautiful cloud of pink? I go into that easiest when I imagine a pink cloud. And as the guides were leading us through yesterday, you imagine the smell of a fragrant pink rose as well. And somehow the smell of that rose opens your heart even more into love and gratitude. And that chakra is used specifically with visualizations during your meditation, during your spiritual practice, where you visualize the whole tribe of Gaia. So my guides have produced several sacred heart meditations, and there always is the step of visualizing all of the human beings on the planet and streaming unconditional love. In that moment where you visualize every single human being on the planet, with you in a great big circle, in that moment you let go of all of your judgment around good and bad, about more than or less than in terms of human beings. Because this is more important than ever in the crisis that we are going through right now. Because 
The corona situation has caused a lot of spiritual people to divide the earth and the human beings on earth into two camps. And in this case, it is not so much about the good and the evil, but about the conscious and the unconscious ones. And the ones that don't buy into the media that would never, never have a vaccination and that don't swallow what we're being told on a word worldwide level about the coronavirus, they consider the people that are swallowing all those things to be unconscious. And the people, when they look at us who don't want to wear masks and who will try our best to get away without wearing masks and would never have a vaccination, they consider us unconscious. And so it's very interesting how this situation has made more of a division, more of a polarity in some kind of way. It's almost as if people are really being forced to choose one side of the fence or the other. And it's doing something. It's making a collision in our consciousness. It's forcing people to stop sleeping and sitting on the fence and to actually decide what they believe and for what reasons. It is by no means over. It is something that is evolving. And this need for us, the awakeners who are choosing to be of service to just for some time, for some moments during the day to visualize all human beings and let go of all of our judgments. Let go of criticizing the government. Let go of criticizing the doctors who are putting out information that isn't really true. Just let go of judging the conscious or unconscious or anything else and remember just for those moments that we are a tribe, that we are part of the tribe of the human beings who inhabit this planet, and that our efforts need to go towards kindness, love, and cooperation in order to birth the new earth so that we stop feeling judgmental, critical, and condemning so many people <laughs> in the process because that isn't a helpful thing on earth right now. Unity consciousness can only come when all of the awakeners stand together and assist and love and support each other in order to support all the rest of the people who are having a harder time waking up. So, the sacred heart chakra is there for that. It is an aspect, a fifth dimensional aspect, a higher self aspect of ourselves that we can tune into simply by visualizing and thinking and feeling rose pink. And for me, the fact that the higher heart, the sacred heart is associated with Jesus as soon as I tune into that pink, I think about Jesus. I get these really stereotypical images of Jesus with the lamb, with the children <laughs> saying these things, you know, suffer all, no, 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 to come unto me. You know, I actually get these things in my memory about Jesus arising, this image of Jesus. And I added this image of Jesus into the very, very first movie that I made for YouTube that where the Pleiadians were talking about Christ consciousness or the Christ. And it was an image that came, you know, I made it zoom in towards the screen and I got so much feedback from that about these eyes of love actually penetrating people's souls when they watch that video. So 
If you remind me in the WhatsApp group, I'll send you a link for that original video. And you can see if it does the same thing for you. So remembering that that pink energy of the Sacred Heart is associated with Christ and Christ consciousness and Christ consciousness equals unity consciousness. And a unity consciousness is what we're moving into as we move into fifth dimensional consciousness. So just giving you some associations with that higher heart. And then the one heart is at once the least familiar and the most familiar to us because it isn't in any way related to our personality selves and how we interact on an everyday level. It is related to what we have been experiencing in the energy ABCs in terms of the awakening of our light body, our greater light body, the embodiment of our original blueprint, the codes that we are downloading, the DNA and light body activation. It's all on this higher dimensional level. And it is on that higher dimensional level that we experience that diamond-like heart energy. And I want you to remember what I'm saying about that when you go through the meditation from last night.